How's it going everyone? In this video, we're going to do an exam level draw the compound question. This is going to be a little bit harder than some of the other nomenclature videos, but it should help you guys when you guys are preparing for your exam. Alright, let's get started. So this question asks us to draw cis 1 sec butyl 5 isopentyl cyclooctane. Now this is kind of a mouthful when you read it at first, but if we break it down, we're going to find out that it's not so bad. So let's start off with the parent chain. Let's start off with the, uh, the cyclooctane. So we know how to draw cyclooctane. We know that it's a cyclic compound with eight total carbons. So let's, let's start drawing it. We have one, two, draw our corners. It should look something like that. If we go ahead and we, we number our carbons, you know, just start any, any one to label as one, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. Now we have cyclooctane and we're oriented. So let's move on to the next part. Let's start with cis-1-sec-butyl. So this gives us a couple of things to think about. We have the cis right here. If we remember, cis and trans gives us information about the orientation of the substituents in space. I know that sounds like a mouthful, but all it means is what side of the compound is the, are, are the substituents on? Well, we have cis 1 sec butyl. So when we have cis, what it tells us is that the, the 1 sec butyl and the 5 isopentyl are going to be on the same side of the molecule. Cis is same. So that's really good to know. That means that when we draw our orientation, we're gonna have we're gonna have the compounds on the exact same side. So we can use wedges or we can use dashes, it really doesn't matter, as long as we use the exact same kind for both. Now we have we have one and we have five. So that means that they're gonna be right across from each other. So let's let's just do let's do wedges. Let's give it a wedge. We'll do the same thing on this side. So since both of the substituents are going to end up on wedges, that's how we know that they're cis, because they're on the same side. I could have done dashes. I, I could have done, you know, some of these dashes instead. But it's going to be the exact same thing. It really doesn't matter which one we use, as long as we're using the same one. Now, let's go back, and let's do sec butyl. So if you guys remember, sec butyl is going to be a four-carbon compound, but when it comes off, it's going to be somewhat sectioned. So normally we have, you know, one, two, three, and four, and, you know, we would have a substituent, you know, attached to, you know, carbon number one as, like, you know, our, our group. But in sec butyl, it's going to attach at carbon number two, and we're going to have a sectioned off butyl group. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to have this be carbon number two right here, and we'll just section it off, and that gives us sec butyl. You guys can see we have one, two, three, four carbons, so we know it's a butyl group. Now let's move on to the other part. Let's move on to the, the isopentyl group. So isopentyl, what do we know about it? We know that we know that a pentyl group is five carbons, but it says isopentyl. Well, if you remember, iso just means some sort of isolation at the top. So if these are, you know, carbons 1, 2, 3, and we need a fourth carbon and a fifth carbon, that's isopentyl. We know this because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we have a breaking point right about carbon number 3. Normally, pentyl is going to look something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's going to be our 5 carbons, but since it's iso, we're going to have a little bit of branching going on at the end of it. So if we're just going to add this onto our giant molecule over here, we're going to throw it on the 5 position, and we already have carbon number 1 right here at the end of the wedge. So we're just going to gonna keep branching. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, and here's where we're going to do the iso part, 4, 5. That gives us isopentyl. So all together, you can kind of see that just by looking at this compound, we have cis 1 sec butyl. 5-isopentyl cyclooctane. 
Like I said, this is an exam level question, so if you guys were able to do this, you guys should feel pretty good about knowing your cis and trans and your nomenclature as far as things like secbutyl, isopentyl. Also make sure you know your, you know your isopropyls and all those kind of weird cases, but as long as you can remember the amount of carbons in those parent chains, I think you're going to be just fine. Anyways, thanks for watching.